Welcome to this video about speakers. So here I will explain you different types of speakers and uh, I will give you a little bit of an overview and uh, throw some bullet points at you on what you should pay attention to when it comes to speakers. So there is uh, a few different types of speakers. Here first I want to explain you what actually um, is a, a speaker. I mean, how does it work in the end? So uh, one probably good thing to remember is that it is actually the exact opposite of a of a dynamic microphone. So what we see here, probably you remember the video where I explained the, elect the, the dynamic microphone. So we had a coil and we had a magnet within the coil. And this magnet was moving and this is how the electrical signal was induced. So here it's the other way around. We ha again have a magnet. This time it's fixed and we have a coil which is able to move. We put the signal we want on the coil. So the coil starts moving in the magnet. It moves the membrane. By the movement of the membrane, we generate an, a, an acoustic signal. So we have the electrical signal. The electrical signal makes the membrane moving and through the pressure which the membrane puts into the case of the speaker we generate a uh, pressure uh, like like a sound wave pressure volumes in the air and we generate a uh, sound which is then sent out into the room so one important thing to consider about speakers is always their directionality and their angle the angle they have so one thing maybe first uh, it depends a little bit on the frequency on how it spreads into the room. So if we send from a speaker a frequency which is very low, uh, like around 200 hertz or lower, we, uh, the sound distributes almost equally into all directions of the room. That's also why it is not very, very important where you place your bass, uh, like your subs, your bass speaker, because uh, you cannot, as a human, you cannot really hear where the sound was coming from because it goes into all directions equally. However, when it comes to higher frequencies, uh, starting at low mids, uh, high mids and highs, the directionality is much more, uh, like it's much more directed sound, let's say. Um, so we can also with this sound, we can basically always hear where does it come from, where is the source of this sound so it's mu it's, it goes into the room much thinner with a much smaller angle the higher the frequency the smaller the angle is basically so that's uh, one thing we have to consider uh, it's much more important where we set up uh, speakers for higher frequency than where we set up speakers for lower frequencies so there is a few different types of speakers i don't explain you here in detail how these different types work just be aware that they exist and that you probably should think about when you buy a speaker like what for uh, is this type of speaker uh, used the best so for subs or bass um, speakers we do have this bass reflex type of speaker so we do basically have the the membrane uh, in the front it's normally like 15, 15 inches 18 inches or bigger um, and then basically the membrane generates the the pressure like the air pressure volume within the case of the speaker uh, here there is a little hole so the like the the air can go out and this is how the sound then is basically generated on the horn speaker this works a little bit different so here basically we have the membrane i guess it's somewhere back there and then we have kind of a horn which sends the sound out so these horns are always used for higher frequencies it, it's never used for lows but m more for mids high mids and highs um, i quickly also at this point want to talk about crossover already now you might have noticed that we always um, use different speakers different membranes for different frequency ranges so even if you buy like a full range speaker it normally has a horn speaker and the like a standard type of speaker with a membrane uh, so there is always multiple membranes or speakers within one or if you have a, a whole of a PA for a concert, of course, there's many different speakers for dedicated frequency ranges. So the important thing here is that if you have more than one membrane or more than one speaker, uh, 
then you have to decide which speaker do you use for which frequency range. And that's pretty important. You should not uh, like have too much of an overlay over different frequency ranges. So that's why we need crossover. We have to decide where the crossover frequency from the lows to the tops, let's say, is. Um, there is two different types of crossover. There is an active crossover and then there is a passive crossover. So the passive crossover is mostly used like in um, speaker systems where you get basically a fixed speaker, especially as a hi-fi or when you get like tops with a horn and the normal membrane, there is mostly a, a passive crossover built in already and this crossover is like fixed. Um, there is a fixed frequency and the manufacturer built it normally that way uh, like uh, it sounds the best for, for this type of speaker. So you cannot really actively yeah, change this crossover there. However, there is also the active crossover where you have an active, we have basically an additional device where you can before the uh, like preamp of the speaker decide which frequency uh, range you want to send to the, your, your high frequency speakers and which frequency range you want to set to your low frequency speakers. So um, the advantage of active crossovers, which are in front of the preamps, um, they're like there, there is like technical advantages. They, they normally have a, a higher quality and it normally sounds better if you have a, like a crossover device only designed to do crossovers. So you can, you can basically set up your system much more accurately. However, uh, there is one big, uh, one little disadvantage and that, that is that basically for every frequency band so however you decide to do the crossover in the end for every crossover you need your own amp, like preamp of the speakers so that you have to consider um, if you want to split more split up into more bands even you always need an additional you always need the preamp for each speaker I mean that's yeah, I could consider that to be <laughs> a disadvantage, but I mean, of course, it's kind of obvious that you that you need that. Um, all right, let me check. Um, yeah, I think there's not much more to say to that. Um, I mean, the pa the passive the passive crossover here it just is basically this passive crossover works fully like electrically. There's just a few um, electrical components they use here to, to do this crossover. So there is also not, this, this, this is also called passive because it doesn't need like active, like um, and more power just to, it is not powered additionally to do this crossover. Whereas of course in the active uh, frequency or crossover it is. So you need, it's like a separate device basically. So for bigger PAs, we always, mo almost always, use an active crossover to uh, to set up the PA correctly. So uh, the next thing I want to talk in this video is about how to set up speaker systems. So that's not an easy job and it needs a lot of experience as well. Uh, I want to explain you one thing here and this is that the sound pressure volume, it goes down over distance. So after two meters, uh, like uh, if the sound traveled for two meters out of the speaker, you already lost six dBs. So that means the sound pressure volume always uh, already halved after two meters. And uh, yeah, after 30 meters, it already went down 30 dB. So um, let's, let's assume we have the congregation, the audience uh, sitting in this room here. So the speaker is here and the first row probably is uh, after two meters and the last row is after 30 meters. So what happens? The front row gets a very loud sound, uh, basically the loudest sound. And then with every row, the sound drops until at the end, there is only like minus 30 dB left. So the difference is 24 dB from the first row to the last row. And this is not what you want. You want for the whole congregation congregation to have the almost same sound. So what you want is that the sound difference from the front row to the last row is as small as possible. So how can you achieve that? One way to achieve that is to hang the speakers higher up in the air, something like that. So what you try is to 
to take your speaker up. up uh, this example here suggests eight meters, but of course it depends always on the room uh, where you use it. But uh, this picture pretty much shows very nicely how uh, we can now reduce this difference in pre in pressure volume, in, in sound pressure volume. Uh, so what, what happens here is that uh, the sound travels down from the speaker, the eight meters, to the first row. So during these eight meters, it loses 18 dB, whereas uh, the loss is still the same when it goes back these 30 meters. It's about minus 30 dB still here. So what we see here is we, as we also lose now a lot of uh, pressure volume for the first row, the, different the difference in pressure volume shrinks. So it's now just 12 dB. Of course, you have to increase the volume of the speaker itself because we lose uh, volume for all of the all of the rows, all of the uh, places where people sit. Um, but the difference is now smaller. So uh, always try to hang the speakers high up in the air so that we uh, have almost everywhere the same uh, volume. And also always there here try different positions, try to, to make sure it's not too high, make, n definitely not too low. So in general you can go always a little bit too high, but make sure you never go too low. One uh, important thing probably is, I'm not sure if I wrote that down here, no I didn't. Um, Ah no, uh, yeah, the, this this <laughs> this first point here, um, the angle of the speaker. So how the angle is set here, it should always be that it points straight to the last row of the congregation. Uh, this you can also try to keep in mind. So don't point it down too much. Don't keep it definitely don't keep it straight. So point it down such that it basically goes straight to the last row of the congregation. Uh, when you have big uh, venues and when you take your speaker up high, you will lose sometimes the first rows. So the sound might not reach the first rows anymore. Why is that? Because every speaker has a certain angle. It uh, distributes the sound. So every speaker can distribute the, uh, the sound in a certain angle horizontally and vertically. And this angle is important to calculate, uh, to find out like whether we can reach the whole audience. And uh, I've experienced it sometimes that we put it up higher, uh, basically then uh, uh, like too high such that the first one or two or three rows could not basically get nice sound from that speaker anymore. So what you do then is you use front fills. So you put additional little speakers onto the floor just to get some sound to the first one or two rows such that they also that they're also covered with sound so that what that's one thing you should consider uh, if you cannot afford front fills you probably take it down a little so that again so that you can um, basically get the sound to all of the people yeah so um that's basically the mo main points here i talked about the angle i said um take it as high as possible to compensate for the volume difference across the room that's an important point and um yeah, also make always sure the, the, the left and right is always the same, the exactly same distance from the walls around it. Else you will get strange comb filter effects. You always want the sound to behave the exactly same on the left and the right. Uh, also try to make sure to set left and right straight and um, not too far out, also not too far in, so that the angles, like the, the area they cover with their sound is used as good as possible. Um, yeah, that's. I think that's basically it for a the moment. There would be much more to talk about. I will maybe also link another video here where, um, where which explains how you can set up speakers in in a venue. See you in the next video.